Skateboarding is naturally a pretty creative form of expression. Every skateboarder has their own style, their own trick selection, and their own preferences when it comes to skateboarding. Now there's a lot of different ways that skateboarders get creative, but one of the most common is by customizing their board. Skateboards already come in a variety of unique shapes, sizes, and colors, but a lot of skaters like to take things a step further by making some adjustments of their own and really personalizing their board to make it more unique. In this video, we're going to go over a few ways to customize your skateboard. Realistically speaking, there's countless ways to customize a board, so if you have any good suggestions of your own, go ahead and leave them in the comments so other people can see it. Be sure to leave a like on the video, and with that said, let's get right into it. One of the best ways to customize a skateboard is to start with the wheels. Skateboard wheel companies are already pretty creative when it comes to designs, but it's not too hard to take things a step further. If you want to keep things basic, the simplest thing you can do is to just flip your wheels so the graphic is on the inside and the outside is just white, but honestly, that's almost become the standard nowadays, so you're not really customizing your board by doing it. If you're willing to put in a little bit of effort, an easy way to personalize skateboard wheels is to dye them a different color. I'll leave links in the description to everything you need, but overall, the process is pretty straightforward. All you need to do is clean off your wheels or get a new set, buy a couple of bottles of Rit dye, and leave your wheels in it for a few hours, and that's basically all there is to it. It's kind of like dyeing Easter eggs, but with skateboarding wheels instead. You can set the wheels in the dye a few different ways to get different designs, and sometimes people will even leave stickers or glue on the wheels to peel off afterwards, which can also give the wheels a cool look. The only downside to dyeing wheels is that the wheels have to be a lighter color to start with, otherwise the dye won't show. If you happen to have darker wheels or just don't want to dye your wheels a different color, another way you can personalize them is with water slide decals. This option is a bit more technical, but essentially there's a special type of paper that you can buy that allows you to print out decals that can go on your wheels. It does take more work than just dyeing your wheels and you'll need a printer along with a specific type of paper, but it can still be cool to try out. Next up, we have trucks. If you want to spice up your trucks a little, the most obvious thing you can do is to paint them. There's a few types of paint that you can use, but the cheapest and most hassle-free way is some good old fashioned spray paint. In order to paint your trucks, you just need to take them off your board, remove the wheels and bushings, and find a good spot outside where you can spray them. You might be tempted to be lazy and paint them without removing everything, but just know that the spray paint can really mess up your bushings and your bearings, so it's worth spending a few minutes to take them off beforehand. Once you're done painting your trucks, it can take a couple of hours to dry, but after that, you just have to put everything back together and you're basically good to go. If you want to get a little more creative with it, you can also paint your base plates and hangers different colors to give them a different design. When it comes to painting trucks, you also have the option of hydro dipping them, which is definitely one of the cooler ways to get a custom paint job. The only problem with this is that sometimes it can take a bit of trial and error, so unless you've had some practice hydro dipping things before, you might have some trouble with it. The last thing to mention when it comes to customizing your trucks is your bushings. It's worth mentioning that some people will dye bushings the same way people dye skate wheels, but keep in mind that this only works with light colored bushings, and a lot of times bushings aren't very visible, so it might not be worth the effort. Instead, if you want different colored bushings, you're probably better off buying a new set. Perfect! Alright, that's the perfect that setup. Crazy. One of the most customizable parts of a skateboard is of course the deck. There's a lot of things you can do to modify a deck, so it really just comes down to how much time and effort you want to put into it. If you want to keep things simple, adding a few stickers to the bottom is an easy way to mix things up without spending too much time, and most skate products even come with stickers for this exact reason. I'll leave a link to some sticker packs below, but you can usually find some at most skate shops as well. They're also pretty cheap to buy, so it's generally an affordable way to make your board look different. The key thing here is to really get creative with it and try to find different ways to mix things up. If you're looking for a more hands-on approach, another way you can customize your deck is by cutting out a custom shape. A lot of people do this with old decks to repurpose them as cruiser boards, and it can be a cool way to make your own personal shape. When it comes to cutting out a custom shape board, it does require a bit of skill, so if you don't know what you're doing, definitely don't try it yourself. Boards with weird shapes have gotten pretty popular over the past few years, so if you don't feel like making one yourself, you also have the option to just buy one new. Keep in mind though, that if you've never skated a shape board, it can take some getting used to, so it might feel weird the first few times you skate it.
for anyone who really wants to get nuanced with it, a great way to customize your skateboard is to switch things up with all of the smaller parts that tend to go unnoticed. Things like the nuts on the end of your trucks, your bearings, and even your hardware can all be simple things that you can use to make your board a little different. It might not seem like all of the smaller parts really matter that much, but they can add a bit of a variety to the way your board looks. A lot of people will do things like pop the shields off of their bearings, or paint their hardware a different color, or even get different colored nuts for their trucks. Also, a lot of skaters will even use their hardware as a way to tell their nose from their tail. They'll either have one or two pieces a different color, or just leave one bolt out altogether, which can make it way easier to tell which side is your nose and which side is your tail. None of these things are exactly groundbreaking, they're more so just smaller things that you can do to make your board a little bit more unique. He rolled away and I didn't even have to cut it. If you want to customize a skateboard, making a custom grip job is one of the best ways to do it. People have been customizing their grip tape ever since skateboarding was a thing, and your grip tape is prime real estate on your board. It's what you see when you look down at your feet, and out of everything on a board that you can customize, your grip tape definitely gives you the most options. Even though people have been messing around with their grip tape for years, recently, skateboarders have really stepped it up when it comes to their grip tape. It almost seems like for a while, there was an unspoken competition as to who can have the most outlandish grip tape. As far as what you should do to make your grip tape stand out, it really just depends on how much work you want to put in and how creative you want to get with it. The classic and probably the most common approach is to just write or draw on your grip tape with a sharpie or paint pen, but there's a ton of other things that you can do too. You can buy grip tape with artwork already on it, use a few different sheets of grip tape to get a larger variety of colors, or even cut up the sheets of grip tape to make different patterns. Another thing people do is buy clear grip tape, which you can then use along with stickers or even printed out photos on the top of your deck. Some people will even take things a step further and make a custom stencil to spray paint a graphic onto their grip. I'll leave links to some of this stuff in the description, but a lot of the items you'll need are things you probably already have laying around your house. Skateboarders are generally pretty artistic, and even though skateboarding by itself is already a creative outlet, a lot of skateboarders enjoy taking things a step further and adding their own creative touch to it. Every skateboarder has their own style, their own selection of tricks, and their own preferences when it comes to basically everything in skateboarding, and the way that you set up your board is just another one of those things. It can be a lot of fun to customize your board, and the cool thing is that unlike most art, you actually get some use out of it. There's a ton of different ways to customize a board, and I'm sure that there's a lot of things that I missed. So if you have any good tips, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Be sure to leave a like on the video. And with that said, thanks for watching.